I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial, no hate can keep me down No matter what my haters say I proudly rep both of my races today I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial and no hate can Salam alaikum YouTube and good morning it's your angry biracial back with another video. Y'all know how I do. I gotta keep my foot on the necks of these modern males 24-7. Before I begin, I want to give a trigger warning. The videos I'm going to react to here are very disturbing. That being said, grab your favorite drink, some popcorn, and let's dive right in. Of a father convicted of trying to murder his newborn daughter. He told police he put antifreeze in the child's milk because he did not want to pay child support. A judge sentenced that father to 50 years in prison. Children's station Fernandez is live in South Fulton where she spoke to the lead detective in this case exclusively today. Taisha, this was a tough case for investigators and I know for you as well to cover today. It was tough for everybody. You know, many of the investigators, Karen, our parents themselves, you know, I'm a parent myself, so everyone has just been disgusted by this father's actions, especially because he appeared to have some remorse, confessed to police, but then took it back. Today, I had the privilege to talk to the child's mother. She's not ready to talk about the conviction just yet, but she did tell me the child is doing okay. It hit home because it was an 18-day-old baby. South Fulton Police Sergeant Serta Dickerson was the lead detective on this attempted murder case back in 2020. He said seeing this newborn poisoned by antifreeze was tough. With our job, we have to really um, tap into two different places. Uh, we have to do our job. We also have to be empathetic with the parent. Um, so it kind of hit home um, based off of us trying to figure out who done it and what the motives were. It all started when Curtis Jack got his co-worker pregnant. She told police Curtis tried to get her to terminate the pregnancy for the entire nine months. Once she had the baby, she had to stay in the hospital. So she told the father to come pick up breast milk from her and take it to the baby at the grandmother's house. Curtis told police he put antifreeze in the milk because he didn't want to pay child support. That could have killed that child. Yes. It didn't. But once Curtis was indicted and faced several charges, including attempted murder, he took back his confession. So detectives and the DA's office had to work even harder to make sure the case was solid and they got a conviction. It's beyond just getting a confession. We still have to prove that the person actually committed a crime. I mean, you still have to prove that the person is guilty. Detectives were so confused by the motive in this case because they said the father had a good paying job and the mother does too. I also want to mention this. Police say Curtis Jack was engaged to another woman no. at the time all this was happening. So that may have played a role uh, in this attempted murder. We're live in uh, the city of South Fulton. Taisha Fernandez, Channel 2 Action News. Is it just me or did that piece of filth in this video look like Black Shrek? On the streets, he is known as Shrigger. As I have been saying on my channel, accountability to modern men is like kryptonite. Old Black Shrek was cheating on his fiance with a co-worker and got her pregnant. And he tried to pressure her the entire pregnancy to get rid of that child. All because he didn't want to have to pay child support. These bums act like paying a couple hundred dollars a month if that is really going to affect their life. They act like the mother's gonna be living it up off their measly $200 a month. For the life of me, I don't understand why modern men feel so threatened by child support. I mean, if you don't wanna be a father, then don't be a father. Pay your $200 a month and go about your deadbeat life. To try and delete a baby, a child, a newborn that was 18 days old, takes a special type of devil. You put antifreeze in that newborn child's milk, trying to destroy your own flesh and blood in hopes to avoid accountability, a little measly $200 a month in child support, and to wipe away the proof of you cheating. Now, instead of living your life and paying $200 a month for the next 18 years, 
You are going to rot and die in prison for the next 50. I'm not sure about everybody else, but I for one will be praying every single night. That old shower time Barry with the rubber ducky is your cellmate. And when I seen my sister-in-law run out the house and I heard a pop and I seen her run out the house, I just, I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do, right? A tragic story we've been covering all day long. That was the brother of the Kenner man accused of killing his three-year-old son last night before turning the gun on himself. Police say that man is still alive and his family says he was struggling mentally after his 18-year-old son was recently shot and killed earlier this month. Amelia Strahan has that story. Emotional videos posted on social media show Melvin McClinton grieving the loss of his 18-year-old son. My brother was crying out. He was on Facebook. He was talking. He was telling people, like, we have to change. Posted just days before, he was accused of shooting and killing his three-year-old little boy before turning the gun on himself. That's my baby. Yeah, he, he joy the world. Beautiful little boy. The tragedy of a life taken too soon. In the pain from a loss that McClendon's brother, Thomas Williams, believes was too much for him to bear. All the pressure you put on a human, a human can only take so much. A person can only take so much. According to police, the crime started with an argument between McClendon and the child's mother at a home in Kenner. Williams was standing outside when he heard the gunshots. My brother was sick. My brother was going through something. A sickness that family tells police McClinton had been battling since his oldest son was shot and killed earlier this month, which left him in an emotional spiral. He wasn't sleeping. He was like, every time my mom would tell him to lay down, he'd be like, all right, mama, all right, all right, all right. Like, he wasn't himself. Like, my brother's just, my brother is just the, the pressure of all this stuff from him losing his child. In these events and circumstances... Dr. Reggie Parquet is a clinical social worker specializing in community violence. He never assessed or treated Melvin McClinton, but says in some cases, trauma from losing a loved one can cause people to dissociate from reality and act out of character. Sometimes these individuals uh, will actually detach themselves from reality. Uh, they, they, they aren't able to recognize real situations in front of them. William says on Wednesday night, his brother wasn't being himself. My brother, he loves his children like to death, like anything. Like my brother, like he loves his kids. My brother, he just, the things that he went through for his losing a son and trying to hold it together and everything, is, it, it, was, it was too much for him to bear. The ripple effect of loss has now changed this family forever. In New Orleans, Amelia Strahan, WWL, Louisiana. We were told Melvin McClendon is in the hospital and we don't have any updates on his condition. I find it crazy how they always want to blame mental health for the despicable actions of a lot of these modern males. They want to make every single excuse instead of blaming Kane culture. He loses his oldest son to typical street violence. That is tragic. No parent should have to bury their child. But then to turn around and delete your youngest son, that just doesn't add up to me. And the fact that he did it during an argument with the mother of his child speaks volumes of to what else is going on there. To blame this on mental illness, to me is crazy in itself. No pun intended. For those that have been watching my channel a lot, they know that I suffer from mental illness myself. I have post-traumatic stress disorder, and I've been diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic for the past 20 years. I have experienced lots and lots of trauma in my life. So when people try to excuse the horrendous and monstrous actions on past trauma and mental illness, it really bothers me. I have suffered a lot in my life, but I'm not out here hurting other people. He was a modern male who raised his son in that messed up cane culture of violence and thuggery. Then he turned around and deleted his other son while having an argument with his son's mother. He was a straight up pookie. And I don't know how his brother can say with a straight face that he loved his kids. 
knowing that he put a weapon to his three-year-old child's head and pulled the trigger. That's not love. I cover a lot of stories like this, and it's crazy how all these modern males always fail in deleting themselves. I'm going to end this video here. I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter, so bear with me. But before I go, you know I gotta shout out my new book, Kang, A Story of Survival. If you enjoy the content and the topics I talk about here in my channel, then you will definitely enjoy this book. It's currently open for pre-order on Amazon.com. So do yourself a favor and pre-order it now. Be one of the first to read my new book in July. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and share. All those things help a small growing channel like mine grow faster. And if any of my commentary or any of the clips that were shown in this video triggered you or made you feel some type of way, let me know in the comment section. I really enjoy reading your comments and interacting with y'all. But most of all, know your angry biracial loves you. Stay safe and peace. It's angry biracial.